I'm gonna grab this back, okay? All right, so let's start out in Supta Baddha Konasana. Now I have a bolster, so I think everybody here has a bolster. I do like to teach it so that people at home without props can work with that. What is that, honey? That's a big one. That's a big one, but I don't think we, that's not, that's not for yoga. All right, Sophie, here's your, here's your little bolster, okay? You're gonna lay on it like us? Well, we gotta join in, that's what the yoga's for. So we'll place our bolster lengthwise of the mat. And then we're gonna use, um, I grabbed three towels. You can use blankets if that's what you have. One of them will go up at the top as a pillow. Roll it up there. And then we're gonna roll this next two towels so that we have a little support under each knee. Here, come here, you can lay on mine. Come here. Sit down right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, good job. Now lay back. Lay back. There you go. Bring the soles of your feet together. Mm -hmm. And then tuck your little towels under each knee. Lay down. Your knee pillow. <laughs> this is an approximation. I'm guessing everybody here has done soup stuff. What? What do you mean? You need a fresh one real soon. Sukta Baddha Konasana is one of those great poses where gravity is gently lengthening the spine over the bolster. It's opening the hips and is opening the heart. And so check in with your hips. Is it opening the right amount? Is it a little too much? In which case, build up the support under your knees. You can fold these over, whatever you need to do. And then if it, you know, we do longer holds in this class. So if it gets uncomfortable, go ahead and straighten your legs out. You can go back and forth between the stretch and relieving any sensation. Any type of discomfort you should attend to. Uh, the other place that sometimes feels uncomfortable here is the chest. With the heart, go ahead and lay on back. With the heart opening, especially if your bolsters are extra fluffy. If your elbows touch, that'll take some of the weight out. But if your elbows aren't touching, sometimes it's a little much of a stretch across the chest. Again, it might start out feeling just fine, but then as you hold the pose, if you find you start to feel an aching or discomfort in the chest, the collarbones, or the shoulders, then we're gonna go ahead and prop your elbows up too for a experience I like to think of as the yoga easy chair. <laughs> so every part of you should be wonderfully supported. Aw. Let's take a deep breath in. Side out the mouth. We'll do that again. Expanding the belly, the ribs. And side out the mouth. Letting the body relax as you exhale. One more. One more. Big breath in. Filling all the way up with air. And sigh it out. <clears throat> it's showtime. Go, go watch a show with Daddy. Come on. Okay, that's fine, but you gotta be quiet. Now we're gonna do a practice called Yoga Nidra, where we go through the body and systematically relax different parts. Now the way that I like to do it is locate the body part on the inhale and then relax the body part on the exhale. But depending on how active the mind is or how separated from your body you find yourself to be, um, sometimes it helps to locate the body part either by flexing 
by pressing that body part into the mat. Or, you know, if I'm really having a hard time, sometimes I'll take my hand and I'll gently rest it on the body part. Feeling the warmth of my hand really helps me connect with that part of the body. And then you'll relax on your exhale. So don't feel like you need to breathe exactly with me. Just keep that rhythm in mind. And, and we're gonna start with the eyebrows. So inhale, raise the eyebrows. And exhale, let your forehead go. Next, we're gonna go to the jaw. Inhale, maybe yawn the jaw open. A nice, oh, big stretch. And then as you exhale, melting those muscles, letting even your tongue relax. Thank you. You know, give it a try. Someday she'll have the patience for yoga. <laughs> Ooh, now I get to do my sutta. All right. Let's go ahead and move down to the neck. Inhale, gently look from side to side. Or just rock the head. You can have your eyes closed for this. And then exhale, release the weight of your head completely into your pillow. Moving down the neck into the shoulders. Let's inhale, do a little shoulder roll back. And then as you exhale, let them soften, growing heavy into your bolster. And traveling through the shoulders, into the upper arms, the biceps, the triceps. Inhale here, maybe lifting your hands a little bit to feel the biceps engage. And then exhale, soften the upper arms, letting them melt. And down we go into the elbows. Breathe in here. And exhale, blessing into your elbows. And down into the forearms we go. So many tendons. Inhale, maybe lift your hand a little bit to feel the muscles there. And then exhale, releasing the lower arms. Moving down into the wrists. I like to do a little figure eight with my hand here. And then exhale. Oh, let them rest. And down we go into the hands themselves. Inhale, maybe arching all your fingers out. And then exhale, letting your hands curl up into their native resting position. We're going to bring the consciousness back up through the lower arm, the elbow, the upper arm, through the shoulder, to the trapezius muscle. Inhale, we did the shoulder roll, but do a little shrug here. The trapezius is, a, is, a, is an offender of <laughs> holding tension. I think we all end up holding it there sometimes. So inhale, kind of shrug up a little. And then exhale, let them soften and melt. And traveling down into the heart. Here's your cardiovascular system, the heart, the lungs. 
We are in a strange time in history right now. Not only is this your physical heart, but it's also the emotional center. And given the state of the world and all of the uncertainties and our inability to reach out and, and socialize with our communities, our loved ones and our friends, let's take a hand right now, put it on the heart. Feel that warmth, the warmth of your body and the warmth of the love that we have. Let's go ahead and bring to mind some people that you love but can't see right now. Let's conjure their faces in your mind. Feel the love that you have for them in your heart. And we're going to send that love out as a little, as a heart beam. It's nice to stoke the heart as we inhale. And as you exhale, send that love out there to who you want to send to. And then feel that love land. Feel them receive it and then return it back to you. And feel those return heart beams that happen. Love truly does connect us. Love knows no distance, no quarantine. There's a power perhaps the greatest force on earth. And so feel that unbreakableness of that connection right now. And how lucky we are to have people to love and be loved by, even in these strange times. Go ahead and release your hand to the side. Let's take a breath into the chest again. And with this exhale, I'll release any tension in the upper chest, upper back. I'm looking at you, shoulder blades. And bring your consciousness down into the solar plexus, the bottom of the ribs, home of your liver, your gallbladder. Also the spiritual home of your sense of self. The solar plexus chakra is where we define who we are and express our place in the world. So let's take a breath in, expanding the ribs out here at their most expansive point. And exhale, ah, melting, melting that lower rib cage area. And bringing your consciousness down in the tummy itself home of your digestion, your stomach, your intestines, where we transmute our food into the energy of life force, and also where we digest our experiences, turning life experience into wisdom. Let's breathe into the tummy, expanding out here. And exhale, <sighs> letting everything go all around the belly, the middle back. Just let it melt. And traveling down into the lower belly, second chakra, Svadhisthana, home of our creativity. Both our generative organs and also our spiritual creativity. Our, our desire to see and add to the beauty of the world. Let's breathe into the lower belly. And exhale. <sighs> Relaxing the lower belly, lower back. And letting go of any armoring that sometimes grows up around our creative potential. And down we go, traveling into the hips themselves, the pelvis. Breathe in here. And exhale, feeling the weight of your bones pulling you closer to the earth as you relax the pelvic girdle, the inner thighs, the groin muscles. And down, down we go. 
into the upper legs, the thighs, the quads, the hamstrings. Inhale here, maybe gently pressing the knees out or lifting them slightly if you want to connect with those muscles. And then exhale. Traveling down into the knee joints. Breathe in here, maybe drawing the heels towards the hips to engage the knees. And exhale a blessing into these important joints. Keep us moving through the world. So often going unthanked until there's a problem. And down we go. Into the calves and the shins, the lower legs. As you inhale, maybe flex your feet to feel those muscles. And then exhale, letting the lower legs soften. And down we go into the ankles. All oh, those little bones keep us mobile. Inhale, maybe flexing the feet to feel your ankles. And exhale, soften the nose. And down into the feet we go, the toes, the arches, the balls of the feet and the heel, the aptly named soul. It's often our connection point with the earth. Our rootedness begins here. Breathe in, maybe flexing your toes or lifting your feet slightly. And then exhale. Soften and release. And just notice what it feels like to be fully and completely relaxed. If you had any spots that took extra work to let them go, this is a good time to check in with them. Trapezius muscles, the forehead sometimes creeps back into some unconscious tension. And that's okay. Just notice, release. And see if you can notice any of the subtler rhythms that are happening. Perhaps you can feel your heart beat, the gentle pulsing in your fingertips. You can feel the breath, the inhale and the exhale. The gentle rhythm that's with you every day of your life. Notice. Where does the breath go to in your body? How slow or fast is your breathing right now? How deep or shallow? There are no wrong answers. We're just coming to know ourselves in this moment. Maybe you can feel the flow the peristalsis of digestion. As your body transmutes food into prana. And maybe you can even feel the subtler flows of energy. As the universal life force energy flows up through your body from the earth. Rains down upon you from the sky your own body energy system like a double helix traveling up and down your spine at the same time, spiraling through each of your energy centers. And if you can't feel it, that's okay. Imagine what it would feel like. Imagine the spiral of energy up your spine, the kundalini energy rising from the earth Spiraling down on the other side, the Ida and Pingala, twin flows, which invigorate your entire body. 
The first step to perception is imagination. So don't feel bad if that's where you're at because you're on the path and it will lead you to the awareness you seek. Now as we rest here, let's focus our mind on the breath. Allowing yourself to become fascinated with the inhale and exhale. Allowing your mind to become absorbed with this physical process. I'm going to roll over and take a seat and sing our invocation. But please stay in your Sukta Baddha Konasana. Remembering that you can always straighten your legs. Add a towel or a pillow if there's something that needs a little more support. Or as I was doing earlier, if you need to place your feet on the outer edge of your mat and let your knees lean in towards each other. That's another way to rest your hips from the stretch if it becomes uncomfortable. The river she
Take a deep breath in. Sigh out the mouth. Wiggling your fingers and toes. Gently coming back to your body. Let's reach the arms up overhead and give a nice little stretch. Maybe interlace your fingers and press the palms away. Maybe pressing the upper arms into your bolster or pillow as you draw the shoulder blades down your back. Release your hands down. Let's press the legs out straight. Maybe point the toes, press into the heels, and scoop your hips up for a nice frontal stretch. We'll bend the knees. And let's drop both knees over to the right. We can reach the left arm out to the left and press that left knee towards the ground. Feels good, a little supported twist. And come on back to center. You might have to wiggle back up on your bolster a little bit and drop the knees over to the left, reaching the right arm up to the right. And pressing that right knee towards the mat if it feels good. And then inhale back to center. Gently rolling off the bolster. And we're gonna just move it out of the way and come on to the back again. <laughs> Go ahead and pull the knees into the chest, gently pulling them in, being mindful of any discomfort or tightness that you feel. Some people's hips are not really made for this motion. So if you need to open your knees out to the side or if you just feel like you're hitting a wall uh, made of bone, you may well be. So be tender with yourself. I like to inhale, moving the knees away. Exhale, squeezing them in. Usually I start out in the middle <laughs> and work my way out to the sides. You'll notice it's a very different experience as the knees open out to the sides. And then pick the feet up, grasping the ankles or the outer edges of the feet for a little happy baby. And if this is good for you, you can just rest here in the stretch. Or if you'd like a little bit more of a stretch, bring the knees in towards your armpit and press your lower back into the mat. Flattening the feet towards the ceiling and making sure each of the four corners of your feet are even with the ceiling. As if you were wearing roller skates, the old fashioned kind with four wheels. And you want each wheel to touch the roller rink, which is inexplicably and perfectly placed right at your feet. Release the feet, reach the arms up overhead and get a nice full body stretch. Oh. Now we're gonna bend the knees and place the feet on the outer edges of the mat. And repeat our little stretch that we did with the bolster a few minutes ago. So inhale with your knees up, exhale, drop them over to the right. We'll go back and forth for a few breaths. Inhale the knees up, exhale them over to the left. Inhale them up, exhale them over to the right. Let's let them rest here on the right. And if this is if this is a good stretch, you can rest here, or if you'd like a little more, you can pick up your right ankle, place it on your left knee, 
Guiding that left knee into the mat. Reaching with your left arm up towards the upper left corner of your mat. And pulling the belly button in to get a really nice stretch over the front left hip. This is a lovely stretch for that psoas, the frontal hip area, the part that gets pretty compressed when we sit in chairs all the time. Go ahead and release the ankle off the knee if you chose that variation. Inhale both knees up. And exhale, drop them over to the left. Once again, maybe this is good for you. That's absolutely fine. If you would like a little more sensation, that left ankle on the right knee, that right arm going up towards your right corner, gentle drawing in of the belly button towards the spine to so just tighten that skin and pull a nice little stretch over that front right so as oh. on one side for me it is pure bliss just like the best stretch i've ever had on the other side oh, it's just nice <laughs> i want it to feel so good on both sides mm. and release the ankles you did that version, inhale the knees up. Now we're gonna cross the right ankle over the left knee and pick the left leg up, interlacing the fingers behind that thigh, or if you need to use a strap, or even just the strength of your left leg. The stretch is in pulling that bent right leg towards the chest. Now this is this is like a nice supine pigeon pose. Although with pigeon, we're flipped over and our entire body weight is pressing that bent right leg into the chest. So this is a much nicer version, although I love the way the other one feels. This is a gentle warm up. So if you are more flexible, you may be able to interlace the fingers around the left shin and that will pull the bent right leg deeper into your chest. Now, if you feel a minor discomfort in that right knee, you can flex the foot, or even if you desire a deeper stretch more safely, flex that right ankle, and that will keep your kneecap in a safe position. Now, if you feel a sharp pain, please back off and take it easy. Our knees are our treasures, and we want to just baby them as much as we can. So, this should feel a nice stretch in that right hip. Now I'll tell you what happens sometimes is that right hip is lowering down and that left hip is rising in order to allow us to go deeper. But if we allow that to happen, it, it diffuses the stretch. And so press your left hip down just an inch or so so that the sides of your waist feel even. You can feel that your hips are square. When you do that, you'll feel the stretch focus in on the piriformis muscles starting deep in your kind of your right butt and going to the knee and it even attaches at the spine. This is a wonderful stretch for any lower back pain or tightness. Um, it's one of, one of the best for that. And let's release, extend the legs and arms for a nice length of a stretch. We're going to yawn every pose. Hope you don't mind. <laughs> and then we're going to bend our knees again. And this time, cross the left ankle over the right knee, picking that right leg up, interlacing your fingers behind that right thigh or shin, depending on how flexible you are. Tuning into your knee, deciding whether you want to flex that foot. I always do it. It's just a little safer, but if you're in a super mellow mood, you may just want to skip it. So then check in with your hips. Usually that left hip is moving down, that right hip is moving up in order to diffuse the stretch a little bit. So go ahead and press that right hip down, bringing the sides of the waist even and focusing that stretch into the piriformis muscle on the left side. And I, I don't know about you, but I can always feel that just tune right in to <laughs> to the one muscle. And then I'll pull it a little tighter. It feels so nice. There we 
nice. And let's go ahead and release. Extend both legs, reaching the arm, arms up. Uh, have a nice yawn. And now we're gonna bend the knees, gently roll over to the side, and make our way into tabletop position. Now, if you're working on a hard surface, you may want to take a blanket or a towel and add a little bit more padding for your knees. I did mention babying them, right? I'm a big fan. And then find your way to all fours, wrists under the shoulders, knees under the hips, and we're going to cat cow. So inhale, dropping the belly, tipping the tailbone up. Exhale, rounding and arching. Back and forth with your breath. Trying to move the whole spine, bringing that stretch from the nape of your neck to your tailbone. So when you do your cow pose, we drop the belly, we drop the rib cage, even letting the shoulders come up off the back a little bit. Tip that tailbone up into the sky and look up, and then pull your ears back until you feel a stretchy sensation in your tummy muscles, your skin. And then when we do our cat pose, tuck the chin and point the top of the head at the mat. Tuck the tailbone, pull the belly button into the spine, and then press into the hands and feet to just curl up as much as feels good. All right, our last round here. Squeeze that last little bit of goodness out of it. and then come to a neutral tabletop position. Now we're gonna go side to side. So big breath here. Exhale, left shoulder to the left hip. It won't reach, of course, but we lean to the side as we exhale. Inhale back to center. Like cat cow, our breath will lead us from one pose to the other. Mm -hmm. Side to side, stretchy most side muscles. Really trying to get the whole spine into the curling. Slow and gentle. Feeling your body as it moves. And we want to end on the right. Once we started on the left, make it nice and even. And then come on back to our tabletop. Now we're going to keep our knees over our hips. And gently walk our hands forward, bringing the forehead and the chin to the ground for heart melting pose or puppy dog pose. And the beauty of this is that we get this nice big back arch without having to balance or hold our body weight. So if you're feeling that nice big back arch is a stretch, that's great. If you'd like a little more, you can look forward between your hands, slide your chin or your sternum to the ground. I kind of like to hold on to my mat and sort of stops me from slipping. And then I really, really, it feels almost like mostly a shoulder stretch where I mostly feel the shoulders of me. Now, if you're feeling it all in the shoulders and not in the back, you can bend your elbows to the sides and ease that a little bit. And then gather your arms underneath you. Coming on up, we're going to bring our toes together, spread our knees apart, sit back on our heel, grab that bolster. Nestle it in between your knees here. We're going to do supported child's pose. This is another one of our holds. 
Now, there's a lot of variations to this pose. You wanna pick the one that's most delightful for you. So with your bolster here, I like to go into it in stages. So we wanna try and keep the booty on the heels if we can. Place the hands on the bolster. Take a big breath, really lengthening your spine. And then exhale, walking the hands forward, laying the body down on the bolster. The hands can come to either side and one or the other of the cheeks will be on the ground. Now, if you notice that your hips are higher than your heart, then we want to build that bolster up so that your heart and hips are even. So here's where you may lift the bolster up and slide a towel or a block. I do a block chuck underneath so that you know that you bring the bolster up to where you're at and for people with really tight hips who are you don't know, like this when they're doing it then lifting that bolster up so that you can really relax in the pose is super nice now you may prefer it with no bolster the other variation is just nice to think of is you can have your hands up here and forward or sometimes it feels really nice to slide them in here between your legs, let your hands rest by your feet. And there is a particularly comforting, cocooning, safe feeling about melting forward like this. Although I find it fatigues my shoulders after a while where the shoulders kind of melt forward and, and don't feel so good. So it depends on you, you can try all of them. I'll let you know at the halfway point so you can turn your cheek to the other side. And if you would, please imagine that I'm coming around the room. I'm gently pressing your hips down towards your heels, gently massaging your back. Now there's two other little variations you should know if you have knee problems or ankle problems. Okay, if you're having knee problems and this flexation doesn't feel good, you can take a towel and slide it here in between the thighs and the calves. And that'll limit the stretch a little bit and make it more comfortable on your knees. Like I said, we should baby the knees. The other thing is that sometimes people's ankles just don't fold into that position. In which case, we like to roll up a blanket or towel like this. And put it back here, sliding it under the ankles so you're not like crushing your toes while you're trying to do the pose. A little support goes a long way. Ah, and now let everything melt into the bolster in this oh so grounding pose. It just allows us the simplicity of childhood where we could curl up on the floor without so much as a pillow to <laughs> fall into a deep sleep. <laughs> Times change, don't they? We'll rest here for a few more moments. Like I said, I'll let you know We'll be turning our head in another 10 breaths or so. I will sing to you. I know a castle on a cloud. I like to go there in my sleep. Aren't any floors for me to sweep? Not in my castle on a cloud. If at any point your neck gets uncomfortable and you need to switch to the other side again, feel free to do that as many times as you need to. The neck has a lot of delicate little muscles some of which get very grumpy if they're not comfortable. And we want to, we, we yearn towards symmetry. 
but it is because we are asymmetrical that we wish for this. So you need to turn your head more to be comfortable. Please do. And in fact, we're all going to go ahead and turn our cheek to the other side now. So if you haven't already, go ahead and look to the other side. There is a lady all in white. She holds me and sings a lullaby. She's nice to see and she's soft to touch. She says, Cosette, I love you very much. I know a place where no one's lost. I know a place where no one cries. Crying at all is not allowed. Not in my castle on a cloud. shoulder stretches. This is what you will want your strap for. You can go ahead and sit on your bolster if that's comfortable or you could stack some blankets or towels up, dirty laundry, whatever works. We never did find you that strap. She just ran off with them. Um, here. I can use a towel. You can probably even do it without a strap if you prefer. And I promise this will be the last upright part. Everything else will be laying down. You know, I, you're going to want to strap for this next part. Take mine. I have another one over here that will work. Mine 
magic of yoga, uh -huh. yoga mat straps. These work great. <laughs> okay. Okay. So hold your strap in front of you, arms apart, strap is taut, and feel free as you need to to take a little more space. Okay, we're gonna inhale, lift up. I'm gonna choke myself. I gotta think around. Exhale, back. Ah. I'm gonna try and keep your arms straight the whole time. If you need to bend your arms, that means take a little more space to the side. Inhale up. Exhale forwards. That's not long enough for you, huh? All right. Maybe try a towel. Inhale up. Look, this is just right around my neck. <laughs> Exhale back. One more time. Inhale up. Exhale forward. Now we're going to take that strap in our left hand. We're going to lift it up and put it behind the head. With our right hand, we're going to flip it and slide the top of the hand along our back until you find that strap. And then gently work the hands towards each other. Maybe they can touch. I can touch on one side. It's funny, just doing this once a week really improves my flexibility. Now with your hands clasped at the back of your heart, lift your spine long and, and kind of arch over the, the two hands back there, like that pressure at the back of your heart just allows you to arch a little more. Lifting that left elbow up, and back. And then if you're feeling feisty, we're gonna lean forward and just kiss the ground with that left elbow. Come on up. Release the hands and, oh, stretch. I'm going to take that strap in your right hand, pull the back behind the head again. Let me take our left hand, flip it over, sliding the back of the hand along until we find our strap. And using that strap to draw our hands towards each other. <laughs> one hand I can, one side I can clasp, the other side, oh, well, they touch, which is an improvement over many times. Lifting that right elbow up, using the hands behind the heart to just have something to arch over. Lifting, and if you're feeling feisty, take a big breath in. And exhale, kissing that right elbow. Ground, coming up. Releasing your strap, arms out to the side. We're gonna just put our arms out to the side with our fingertips peeled back as if we were trying to stop the trash compactor from squishing our intrepid heroes. If you're a Star Wars fan, you should probably get that if you're older than me. And then point the fingertips down, making kind of like a duck hand. And then open the palms up again, peeling the fingertips back, hopefully really feeling a stretch in all of your arm tendons. And then point them down again. Now we're gonna do some neck stretches. And as we drop the head to one side or the other, the shoulder kind of wants to go with it. You know, that instinct is to get the head farther over. That must be better, right? Well, no. We want to lift the heart, keep the spine long, keep the shoulders nice and open. And so when we drop the head, you'll have to have a little counter pressure on that other side to keep the shoulders even. And even if it doesn't go as far as you think you could go or you want to go, try to just try it with this being static. So we're going to inhale, get tall. And exhale, right ear to the right shoulder. Letting the weight of the head gently stretch that side of the neck. Inhale up. Left ear to the left shoulder. 
Again, just the weight of the head, stretching it out. Inhale up. Right ear to the right shoulder again. This time we're gonna rotate our gaze up and feel the front left part of the neck stretch. Then rotate your gaze down to the mat in front of you. Feel the back left neck stretch. And inhale up. Left ear to the left shoulder. First, just feeling the weight of the head, stretching all those delicate little neck muscles. Then rotate the chin up a little bit. Feel the front right part of the neck stretch. And rotate the gaze down, feel the back, right part of the neck stretch. See, I'm already leaning. It's human nature. And inhale up. Now we're going to move our chin over the right shoulder. Just turning the head and keeping the shoulders open. And inhale forward. And exhale, chin over the left shoulder. Doesn't have to get there. And inhale forward, chin over the right shoulder again. This time, if you'd like to take a hand, place it on your jaw here. Not to press or pull or push, anything like that. Just to hold space. And then if you can, just turn your head that extra little millimeter. You can witness it with that hand. You can support yourself. Release, inhale forward. And exhale, chin over the left shoulder. Again, if you like this, you can place your hand on your jaw. Not to push or pull, more to just hold a warm support there. So as you turn in that last little bit of space, you can really witness yourself and your amazing flexibility. Release, and inhale forward. Now we're gonna go back and forth. When we lift the chin up and drop the head back, sometimes there's an instinct to compress the muscles of the front of the neck to lift the head up manually. But we don't really have a lot of muscles there. You can injure yourself. So when the head is back, we'll come out of it by walking the hands forward until the head naturally follows. Okay? So first we'll go forward and I'll remind you in a moment. So tuck the chin back like you're trying to talk funny. And then rotate the top of your head forward, lifting your heart up as if the heart could come up to meet the chin, letting the weight of the head gently stretch all those muscles to the back of the head. And inhale forward, or up rather. Once again, tuck that chin back. I'm going to rotate the top of the head forward. You know, some people, it's kind of nice to sort of turn a little bit to either side, just a little micro turn. It really seems to open it up so my head will release further down. And take it easy. You may also want to place your hand here at the back of your neck, not to lift or pull, or not to push or pull really, but to more to lift or to make some space for your head to press against it. Yeah, I notice when I kind of press my head back into it, I get a kind of nice stretch. And release, coming on up. Now we're gonna go back. Remember my warnings. <laughs> so for this one, we're gonna jet the chin forward, funky chicken style. And then lift the chin as if you could lay the scalp down on the back of the neck. Lift up only as far as feels good. If you like to go all the way back, you can place your hands here behind your hip. I even like to sort of hold on to the bolster. There's really arch, leaning my head onto the shoulders, and then walk the hands forward, and the head will naturally follow. Oh, and you can just come all the way forward. Get a little more of a stretch. Well, I promise you that was the last little bit, even sitting up. So we're gonna need a strap for this next part too. You may wanna block, although it kind of is a little awkward to use, so. 
move. Once you got two out of the way, slide your hand under your back. And then first, let's just extend our legs and our arms and get a nice full body stretch. We were standing on our feet. This would be mountain pose. What a nice pose it is. Now we're gonna bend the right leg and loop your strap around the arch of your foot. Okay, lifting that foot up, not to the point where you feel a stretch, but just to where you're like, okay, my leg is in the air. You want your strap to be taut, your arm to be long, and we're just giving our, we've got a lot of leg, uh, leg muscles and tendons, and we're not super warm, right? Because it's a slow class. So we want to give our leg a little warning. And then so gently pull that foot towards your face to the point where you feel a little stretch. It should be a pleasant stretch. Nothing super painful. You know, maybe a little bit stretchy feeling, but not painful. Now, you can passively do this stretch and just kind of relax here. That's a totally fine way to do it. Or if you'd like a little more, I like a more active stretch even when I'm really relaxed. And so for that, you're gonna press your left heel into the ground and step your right foot forward like you're trying to step over a wide little, little stream. And you, you, it's a little too wide for you, so you have to really stretch as you step across. And I find when I do that sort of like active, taking a big step, you saw, I get a lot more flexibility. If you're feeling feisty, you want to burn extra calories, you can float that left foot. I won't be joining you, but hey, it's a valid option. You want to adjust your hand up so the strap is taut, your arm is straight, and this is allowing just the weight of our arm to pull the stretch rather than any muscular strength in the hand. Now take that strap in your left hand, Put your right elbow on the ground. Put your right hand against your right thigh. This is gonna be a little kickstand. It's gonna support the weight of your leg as you open it out to the side. So just hold the weight of that leg in your hand and with the strap until you get it opened out to the side in a way that feels good. So here's where if we had a block, you could place it under the leg, but we're going to do that with the hand instead. Now, if you're really open, you can grab that foot with your right hand and just feel a glorious stretch on in the inner thigh. I like to joke that this is the way you finish your tan. <laughs> you know, you gotta do one side, then the other, and then, well, there's those hard to hit places. <laughs> and this is great for those. Now, take that strap back into your left hand. We're gonna lift the foot up again. And we're gonna bring it to just over the center line of the body. Okay, so if your foot is over your thigh, you want it to be over your left thigh. It's over your hip, your left hip, belly, left belly. So just, just over the center line. You should feel your IT band stretching. That's along the outer edge of your leg. If you don't feel it, peel those toes back in. Woo, you feel it. This is the most uncomfortable thing I'll ask you to do, I promise. Except for home at the end. <laughs> Now go ahead and drop that foot all the way over to the left, finding the ground, rolling with it as much as you need to for our lovely twist. Now once I'm here, I like to lift my rib cage up and resettle it so that it's pointing a little more towards the ceiling. And then, you know, this is your twist, so you decide if you would like to bend that right knee that can feel kind of nice. Oh, get a little pop in there. Or if you maybe want to grab that big toe, if you're super open, sometimes you can grab that big toe. And breathe into that space between the upper ribs and hip on that right side. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and Bend the right knee, <laughs> everything pops. Roll onto your back 
And come into half happy baby, grasping the outer edge of that right foot or ankle with your right hand. And then imagine yourself in some big, beautiful lunge. This for an active class, we flip ourselves 180 and be doing lizard pose. And in this position, it is pretty nice to float that left foot. I find I get like a nicer stretch with the inner thighs and groin if that hip floats a little bit. Release your right foot from the strap. Extend it nice and long. Maybe reach the arms overhead and just notice how different your legs feel. My right leg feels a lot more relaxed and open into the floor. My left leg still feels a little bound up and I wouldn't even notice that sensation if I hadn't stretched out my right leg. So then we're gonna go ahead, take our strap, pick our left leg up and strap around the foot. Again, don't stretch right away. First, just find your position, but with enough slack, with the foot far enough away that it's really not much of a stretch, it's more a pre-stretch. And we just say, are you ready, leg? <laughs> Let's bring you a little bit closer to the face. Okay, keeping that strap taut and the arm long. And if you'd like to try that trick here, where you press your right heel in and you lift that left leg forward, the active stretching where our muscles are engaged is safer and more functional than relaxed stretching, which is funny to say in a class where relaxing and being blissful is a big part of it. But you know, for these leg stretches, it's really nice to bring a little activity into it. So just notice how this leg may be very different from your other leg. That's fine. And then take that strap in your right hand, putting your left elbow on the ground, pressing that left hand into your left thigh, and then using both hands to guide that foot over and open to the side. This is for stretching our inner thigh. And it's really nice to do so at your own pace without the full weight of the leg pulling you into a stretch that can sometimes be uncomfortable. Here we're supporting the weight of the leg in two different ways. And then if you can reach that foot, if you're that open, it's always fine to use a strap, but I'm going to switch from my handhold, so I'm explaining it. If you want to hold the foot out to the side. And you can make this one active too. We didn't do it on the other side, but I usually say, you know, we press the right heel down and then kick that left heel to the side like you're trying to poke your neighbor. Maybe they're snoring and you're just like, hey. <laughs> and that again, that bringing a little, little bit of activity into it. Sometimes just makes it more comfortable and more functional to stretch a little deeper. So let's go ahead. Lift that leg back up, taking the strap into the right hand. Now we're going to pull that left leg right over the center line of the body. So that foot's floating over the right thigh, hip, or belly, depending on where you're at. If you don't feel it, flex the toes. Oh, I see that. So intense. And then let's go ahead and drop that foot all the way over to the right side of the body for a twist. Now, I like to lift up the rib cage and kind of resettle it. You can keep that leg straight. You can bend the knee. You choose a variation that feels the best to you. And then breathe. Expanding the rib cage and breathing into that rib and in between the space of the rib and the hip on that left side. It's kind of nice to bend that knee and then go into a deeper twist. It felt really good on the one side. And let's bend that left knee and roll onto our back again. Coming into half happy baby pose. And some people like to rock here. You may want to float that right foot. Imagining yourself doing a wonderful lunge or lizard pose. And feeling 
you know, lunges are just so good for the lower back. So this is our no pressure lunge. And release the left foot. Swing the left leg long. Maybe reaching the arms up overhead. For a nice full body stretch. All right, where are we at? Oh my goodness, it is already Shavasana time. All right, so let's just do a final twist before moving into our luxurious Shavasana. So bend the knees, placing the feet on the mat. We're gonna scoot our hips a few inches over to the right, and drop the knees to the left. Now if you've got some really tight hips, you may want a block between your knees or a blanket. Even just a tiny little support there. You might want to try it. Yeah. Can really make this more comfortable on the hips. If you are fairly open, you may want to move that right hip above the left hip. <laughs> My twistability is really, really impacted right now by my baby. <laughs> hanging out in my uterus, right where my knee wants to be. <laughs> and it feels really nice to, I guess, I kind of, I go back and forth, right? I'll put my right knee on the ground, and then that right shoulder lifts up. And then I let the knee lift, and I press the right shoulder to the ground. And then I kind of find that spot where I'm rocking between the two. Feels really nice. And then roll onto your back again. Centering your hips. And then we'll scoot a few inches to the left. Drop the knees to the right. And again, you can have a block between the knees. You can lift that left one up. You can even cross the legs, ladylike style, if that feels good. You may want to try that rocking thing where you bring the left knee to the ground and then rock back until the left shoulder touches and then kind of rock between the two. It's especially nice. You know, a good chiropractor sort of does that to you. It supports you right down here in your lower back and then crack. Oh, so good. I miss my chiropractor. Oh, and then let's roll onto our backs again. Time for our glorious reward. Now, if you're in a place where you can put your legs up the wall, that is the, the Cadillac of endings to this class. If we were in the studio, we'd all put our legs up the wall, but we're not all practicing in a place where that's possible. So you can place a bolster under your thighs. You can even come back to Supta Baddha Konasana if you love that pose and you want a little more of it, you can finish off that way. Here's my bolster. Now if you just lay, you can also just lay flat on your back, spreading your arms and legs. If you find that bothers your tailbone or your lower back, that's when the bolster under your thighs really comes in handy. You want to be able to completely relax. So if you are on your back, go ahead and work your shoulder blades under your body. And find a spot where your back itself holds them in place. And that'll open the chest up a little bit, and it's nice. We like to have the palms up, if possible. Some people's shoulders and wrists and hands are just not up for that, but if it is possible to do palms up, not only is it a nice stretch, the idea is in yoga that the palm that is up, pointing towards the heavens, is there like a little space beckoning the gods and the goddesses to fill it with wisdom. It's saying, I'm ready for blessings. My open palms are lifted to the sky. Which is some kind of a charming idea. You know, nature abhors a vacuum and how nice when it fills it with blessings and wisdom. 
<laughs> so let's take a deep breath in here. Sigh it out. Remember back to our yoga nidra practice at the beginning of class. And just quickly, consciously relaxing jaw, forehead, tongue, the neck, the shoulders, the arms and hands, the chest, the belly, the back, the hips, the legs, and the feet. Notice the breath. Probably a small breath now, shallow and relaxed. Let all your muscles soften. Let your ligaments and tendons soften. Let your connective tissue, your fascia soften. Let your skin soften. Let your heart, your emotions soften. Let your preferences soften. Let your opinions soften. Let it all grow diffuse and far away as your mind floats. In these moments of repose, the mind is incorporating these new states of flexibility and relaxation into your repertoire of being. And let it all melt to float away. Abroad as I was walking One evening on the strand I heard a maiden bellow So sweetly she did sing Her chain she rattled in her hand And the same she I love my love because I know my love loves me. Who were his parents who sent my love to see? Who was the sailing ship that bore my love from me? Yet I love his parents since there is, although they've ruined me. My love, because I know my love. Swallow ascend into the air, and if I lie. 
lost my lover and could not find him there. I quickly would become a fish and search the flowing seas. I love my love because I know my love loves me. Strong we will garland, I'll leave it very fine. Roses, lilies, daisies, I'll mix the even and I will present it to my love when he returns from sea. I love my love because I know my love loves me. My love loves me. I As she sat there weeping, her love he came on land. A being she was in Bedlam, he ran straight and told her. He flew into her snow white arms. And saying she I love my love because I know my love loves me she said my dear don't frighten me are you my love or no Yes, my dearest beloved, I am your love also, and I am returned to make amends for all the suffering. Love my love because I know my love. into your chest for one final squeeze before gently rolling to your side and resting in fetal position. Our trip to the underworld with Shavasana is a sacred journey. And oftentimes when we surrender ourselves to the void, 
we'll find we've brought jewels of wisdom back with us. And so just notice if you've brought anything back with you. And also here in this liminal space between states of mind, we can let things go into the void that no longer serve us. So pick something now and cast it into the void. And slowly, gently find yourself rising back up to a comfortable seated position on a block or bolster, however it feels good to you. <clears throat> we'll close class with one sound of OM. You know, if you feel shy, you can always OM along with us in your mind. Certainly, I will feel your energy. So let's take a cleansing breath in. And sigh it out. And breathe in for our own. The divine in me, the house, to the divine in you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me. This is my biggest class in quarantine. Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. You too. So nice. A yoga question. Yeah. I'm very close to being asleep a lot of the time. Is that I mean, totally fine? Okay. I tend to judge myself. I like to do things like just so. And so I'm just curious, like, because there's a, I feel like I'm trying to learn about meditation. I feel like there's a difference mm -hmm. between like paying attention to being present and just like falling asleep. <laughs> but there's a fine line sometimes. And I'm just tired. So true. Well, what I have heard is that if you fall asleep, Sometimes that's the deepest work is happening. Okay. So never judge yourself for that because it's always just a part, you know, learning to navigate that in-between space where you're so relaxed, you could fall asleep, but then the mind stays focused. You're going to err on the side of falling asleep as you begin your journey. And that, I think, a sign that you're doing very well at relaxing and surrendering things that keep you anchored to the outside world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think, especially in this class, falling asleep, I, I love it when I play the harp and we do the long one because people snore. And to me, it's like applause. I was like, oh, I did it. <laughs> well, actually, my Zoom cut out, like, earlier when we were doing the Shavasana thing. And so I, like, because you tend to kind of talk most of the time, even quietly, I was like, yeah. oh, but it was like really quiet and I was just trying to like be relaxed. I was like, it's been a while. And I looked at the Zoom and it dropped me. Um, <laughs> Take this back to yoga. <laughs> well, I didn't notice you disappeared. So it, I don't, anyway. It's supposed to make a video that then I, we're going to post, but I've had a pretty bad luck with the quality of the video and the postability of it. So. Well, I'm glad okay. I made it again to a live class. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. It was wonderful to look at a face, some faces while I teach. And I'll be here next Sunday. This is literally the only thing I'm doing right now. Okay. Great. <laughs> in my mind to make it happen, but it just doesn't always happen. Oh, your hair is awesome. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's getting super long again. I got those pregnancy hormones. Maybe oh. I can get down to my mid-thigh. Let me have mermaid hair, please. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for joining, and hopefully we'll meet in person someday. Yes. All Take right. care. You too. Bye. Bye.